So my hands will be on the wheel at all times, lightly applying slight pressure so that the car knows. Nice job going through the intersection. Driving down this road, I'm going to turn around and reset the navigation. Coming to a stop at this red light, blinkers turned on. So I think this road, I've driven it a couple times today and the lighting has changed. Uh, earlier this morning, the, it successfully did navigate a portion of the road where I thought it was coming a little close to the right hand side where there's a drop off, but it didn't successfully do it. The lighting changed a bit, and I tried it a few minutes ago before I had my camera set up. Got a little jerky, slowing down for the on-ramp, but it is slowing down. It shows a 50 mile per hour speed limit, but it's slowed down. And um, <clears throat> this line here is very dim, but it was able to successfully see it the whole time. A little bit of shifting back and forth in the lane but not bad. So as I was saying, successfully did the road earlier, and then a little bit ago, it didn't do so well. I had to disengage, because I just thought it was getting a little bit too close to the edge of the road, and I am not gonna let the car drive off the road. However, 
However, what I am interested in seeing is, first of all, if the car can do it this time, now that the lighting is a little bit different. But more importantly, if Tesla can use the data and the logs that I've sent in to improve autopilot, full self-driving data for the next software releases. And ultimately the goal is to make this better for everyone. So I am, there's the destination. I'm just going to manually drive here and then I'll, I'll input a new destination when I come to a stop. I'm going to turn it from here. You know, because this is not an autonomous vehicle right now, it's, it's a, a beta software that's a driver assist and I do want to talk about that. This is a challenging intersection too. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set a, oh, it's a green arrow. Okay, well, I'm trying, I'm being very cautious and safe and I didn't, didn't wanna be messing with the navigation while driving so I will I will test that intersection again later uh, we'll, I'll have something ready to go there's the green light so this is a single lane it doesn't even matter that there's a destination turned on I'm gonna alright navigate uh, or sorry, autopilot is engaged. There's no white line on the right, so the car is currently able to stay nicely in the lane. Here's a bunch of leaves. Slow it down. drop off turn it's slowing down staying to the left okay so I did it that time oh, I accidentally disengaged it. it looked like it was starting to go over the yellow line this is definitely a challenging road and I'm looking forward to improve seeing improvements <clears throat> But I want to do it in a safe manner, so I will disengage it if it looks like it's not doing what it's supposed to do. Again, there's no white line on the right. Speed limit is 35. I'm going to turn around and try it the opposite direction. This one might be even more challenging because there's the sunlight shining towards the front camera. It's blinding me a little bit. Okay. Slow down there where the uh, curve was and over the yellow lines. Blinding sun is still there. 
trees right up against the side of the road. I'm ready to take over at any instant. And that's the thing with autopilot. So especially with this beta, you know, we have to be very cautious and careful in making sure the car is not doing what it's not supposed to do because ultimately I'm driving the car. But I did want to mention that real quick because there's this, a lot of people talk about autopilot. Okay, we'll get back to that after we go up this hill. See, this is upward hill, blind corner. Oh, it's slowing down. Oh yeah, that's nice. Okay, that did that was okay. I don't know. It just kind of went on the yellow line, but that was not bad earlier. It was not as good earlier, so I it's hard to tell if it's learning or if the lighting conditions are different. But what I will say is that. was very good here you hear the sun's directly in the camera no problems it's not to say that there aren't any problems the, the point of this is to advance the software driver assist tool and that's what all of autopilot is currently whether it's the regular autopilot where It stays in the lane, navigate on autopilot where it changes lanes on the highway. The driver is responsible for being 100% attentive. And a lot of people have talked about, well, autopilot's a bad name for it then because that autopilot indicates that the car should be able to do anything. I should be able to take a nap or read a book. However, that might be the end state of full self-driving. will require some regulations and laws to be changed, but, but currently, the Autopilot software improves safety so much, and it's up to the driver to stay attentive. So as far as the name, I did just want to mention that I'm a helicopter pilot, and in an aircraft, Autopilot works very similar to the way it works in a Tesla. In a, especially in a dual pilot aircraft, the the flying pilot, is, even if they're on autopilot, has to maintain situational awareness. They have to keep their eyes scanning for other air traffic. Okay, it's left turn. It's not really a turn, it's kind of a fork. But autopilot proceeded nicely, slowly through the intersection. I don't have a destination set, so we're just kind of driving right now. But an aircraft uh, pilot flying always has to keep full situational awareness. Especially if they're under visual flight rules. Um, see and avoid is the concept, the term used uh, to avoid other air traffic, even when on autopilot. Even air, uh, air, airliners, when they're on autopilot, in the clouds, if you're in and out of the clouds, the, the pilots always have to avoid other aircraft because even though when you're under control of uh, air traffic control on radar, it's the pilot's responsibility to avoid any air, uh, aircraft that air, ATC may have missed or just doesn't see on radar. So it is very similar. Ultimately, the driver's responsible if and when we get to the point that uh, the cars can drive themselves without input or possibly a driver in the driver's seat. 